All right, so this module is all about the document object model or what people tend to call the DOM. So let's learn what this is all about. Now, up till this point, our websites have been static. We've basically planned what content our website should have and also the appearance of that content. So we wrote the HTML and the CSS code, then we hit save and refreshed our browser and there is our website. Now, here's a problem. If we want our website to be interactive, then we need to be able to change parts of the website on the fly, right? So that means when a user clicks on a button, we'll need to respond to that by changing the content or the appearance of our website. But once our website is live on the internet, we can't sit there and wait for the user to click on things on our website and then update the HTML and CSS code and then reload their web page. That's, that's impossible. And also, it will be a nightmare if you have more than two or three users. You would literally be chained to your website. Now, this is the problem that the DOM or the document object model solves. It basically catalogs the web page into individual objects that we can select and manipulate. So on the left here, we've got the HTML code of a really basic website. It's just got a head section, a body section, a title and a button. And on the right is roughly the structure of our website that you might see in the browser. Now, the task of converting an HTML file into the DOM is done by the browser when you load up the web page. And what it does is that it turns each of these elements and their associated data into a tree structure with a whole bunch of objects that you can select and manipulate. So the tree model on the right is usually how you'll see the DOM represented. You can see that all of the elements in our HTML has been converted into objects and their relationships to each other mapped out in the tree diagram. So for example, the head section is a descendant of the HTML object, but the head and the body, they're siblings. They're not descendants of each other. And everything that is contained inside your HTML document is contained in an object called the document. And for some of you guys, this might look a bit like the organizational structure of a company with bosses and subordinates all mapped out. Now, there's no point just talking about the DOM without using it. So let's see it in action in real life. Now, I've added a few more HTML elements to our web page. And so now this is what it looks like. And I've deleted the JavaScript and CSS that I was showing you in the last lesson. So now we only have an HTML document that includes an H1, an input in the form of a checkbox, a button that says click me, and an unordered list with three list items. The first of which being an anchor tag that points towards google.com. So this again is a really simple website, but it now has more elements for us to play around with. So I've installed an HTML tree visualizer, Chrome plugin, which is free to install. And I'll include a link to it um, if you want to check it out as well. But basically what it does is it allows us to visualize what the browser does when it turns our HTML code into a DOM tree. Now you can see that at the top, we've got our HTML. So this entire tree is contained inside an object called the document. And inside that, the first thing we have is an HTML object, which contains two children, uh, the head and the body. And inside the body, there's a further five children with an H1, an input, a button, a UL, and the script. So now we can actually tap into the document object model, the DOM, using JavaScript and navigate through this tree. So let's just print out and see what the document looks like. So if you just write document into the console and you expand the output you get back, you can see this is the entire HTML file that we've currently got. Now, if we want to navigate through this document object, we can go over to the first element child. So if I hit enter now, you can see that it's giving me everything that's inside the HTML. Now I can go even further by saying, what is the first child of the first child of the document? So you can see that if the document is all of this and the first child is the HTML, then the first element child is over here. It's the head. 
And if I hit enter, you can see that the Chrome developer tools confirms what I just said, and we get returned only the head part of our website. Now, if I wanted the body, then I can say instead of first element child, I can say last element child. And now I get everything that's inside the body. And you can see we're kind of starting to dismember and dismantle our website to grab and select individual parts that we're interested in. So now what would I have to do in order to select the H1? Well, it's just one level deeper. It's the first element child inside the body. So now if I hit enter, you can see I've tapped into our H1, which currently says hello. So once you've successfully selected the object that you're interested in inside the DOM, then you can manipulate it. So we know that this line of code gets us to our H1. So I can simply save it inside a variable. So I can say var heading equals this object. And now you can see if I hit heading, you can see it's pointing towards our H1. So if I wanted to manipulate that heading, then I can simply say heading dot in HTML equals goodbye. And now you can see if you watch over here that when I hit enter and execute this line of code, I have used my JavaScript to select the H1 element using the DOM. And then I've manipulated it by changing its inner HTML. So the part between the HTML tags here to say goodbye, and it gets updated in my website. So this is how we can change our website on the fly using the DOM. Now there's lots and lots of different ways that I can manipulate my object. So for example, I can say instead of heading.html, I can say heading.style.color equals red. And that changes my text color of the element that I selected to red. I can also select elements and make it do things. So for example, if I wanted to select my input, that's the checkbox, then I can simply say document query selector. So this looks inside our entire document for the object that has the selector of input. And once I have that object selected, then I'm going to call a method on it, which is to say click. And what click does is that it simulates a mouse click. And because I've selected the input or my checkbox, when it performs the click function, then it will check that checkbox. So I'm keeping my mouse down here. You can see I'm not cheating. And if I hit enter on this line of code, you'll see that my checkbox just got clicked. So it performed an action. So you can see that our objects inside the DOM can have properties and methods. Now properties describe something about the object and the methods are the things that the object can do. So for example, let's say that our object isn't an HTML button, but instead it's a car object. Well, the car object also has properties and methods. Well, the car object might have properties such as the color of the car, the number of seats, the number of doors. So these are things that describe something about the object but it also might have methods. So the things that it can do, namely break, drive, park. So we can use JavaScript to manipulate our object. And it's all done using the dot notation. So if our object was called car, then we can say car.color to get the value of the property. So this is called a getter. And in this case, if we ran this code, it will give us the output of red because the current value of the color property of the car is equal to red. Now with properties, we can also set it. So we can say car dot number of doors. So the number of doors property of car, let's change it to zero. And now our car has no doors. And this is called setting a property. And you can see that the difference between setting a property and getting a property is simply whether if we assign a value to it with an equal sign. Now, what about methods? Well, if we call the method drive on the object car, and remember we're still using that dot notation, then our car will do something. It will drive, it will start moving. And this 
is when we call a method on our object. Now, up till now, I've been using the words methods and functions more or less interchangeably. But the only difference between a method and a function is that a method is something that an object can do. So it has to be associated with an object. And in this case, drive is a method because it's associated with the car object. Now, if we take a look back at our button object that we managed to select using the DOM, then we're able to tap into some of its properties to get it and set it, as well as use some of its methods to get it to do things. So the properties for our button include things like the inner HTML, the text, um, or the style, or the first child. And we've been tapping into those. And we've been tapping into those by saying dot inner HTML or dot style dot color. But methods, you can see, all have a set of parentheses at the end. And this is how you can tell the difference between a method and a property. Even though we're using the dot notation to tap into the property or the methods, the methods, because they're essentially a function that the object can do, all have a set of parentheses that allow you to potentially give it an input if needed. Now the methods for a button might include things like click or a pen child to add another child on or set attribute to change one of its attributes like changing the href, for example. Now we're gonna be reviewing these concepts of objects, properties, and methods. So don't worry if it doesn't make sense immediately. All that you need to know is that we can access these properties and methods through using the dot notation. And by doing that, we can manipulate our HTML objects. Now as a challenge, I want you to look into the resources of this lesson where you'll find all three files, index.html, index.js, and style.css in the current state. And I want you to download it, open it up in Atom, and select the third li. And I want you to change the text from the word third to your name or anything you want. But you can't touch the HTML file. You have to do it inside the console, just as I've demonstrated before. So pause the video now and give it a go.